Hello, and welcome back to the Manga Education Podcast, where I answer your questions about the manga, webtoon, and anime industry. I'm your host, Brandon Chen. I run a manga and webtoon studio. We create original stories, and uh, we try to take the successful ones to anime, which is very exciting. And yeah, pretty much I'm here to answer your questions. These are questions that you guys submit to me. Before that, make sure to subscribe so that you can get more educational content, just like this, for my long form. Um, And then also drop a like, because the YouTube algorithm requires it. Otherwise, we get buried. So um, help other people get educated. Drop a like. And let's get right into the video. Um, Parth is asking, how to get too many ideas to write multiple amazing stories like you? Well, ideas, you can't just force them out, right? They kind of just come out of nowhere. So the main thing is like, live your life, read things, consume things, have a lot of inputs, as in like experiences, stories, movies, TV, whatever, that are coming into your head. And those things will be like your inspiration, right? Those are things that inspire new ideas. And then for me, what randomly happens is like one day I'll be on a hike or one day I'll watch a new movie or I'll see a TV show or I'll have this emotion or I'll talk to this person and it'll spark something in me. And I'll be like, wow, that would make a really good story idea. And usually it's just like a log line. It's like one or two sentences like, hey, this is just a concept. And to make that a real story, I would have to sit down and flesh it out, but it starts with an idea. And that idea, usually I write down in my notebook immediately. So what ends up happening is that over years and years and years, you end up with this notebook full of ideas that are just waiting for me. Like I would say like that's a seed idea and I'm just, they just need me to water that that seed. And uh, yeah, I would say that's probably the best way to get ideas. Not a question, but just wanted to thank you for inspiring a lot of people. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. What does your workflow look like? Isno asks my workflow. So um, you guys don't know, I'm a writer producer. The involvement I have in these projects is usually, Brandon, I come up with the idea. I think that idea is good and I will find an artist or an art team to attach to that idea. So I'm also a producer where I take talent, I bring them into the project that is latched to my idea and we're gonna build this project together. Then I am also like up of an agent, which an agent, what they do is they are the intermediary between talent and publisher or distributors or streamers or whatever. So I'm also doing the job of an agent where I am selling the project also, my own project, directly to a publisher or distributor. I'll come up with the idea, find the team, bring the team together to build a pitch. We build the pitch. I take it to the distributor or publisher directly. I send it to them. I pitch it to them, whether it's on a call or through a deck or whatever. They say yes or no. If they say yes, then my job then is to deal with all the legal stuff, hire everyone, all that stuff figure out how the budgeting is gonna work. That's also a producer's job, like figuring out how the budget budgeting stuff works. Then I have to write it. So then I write the story and then uh, work together from an art direction perspective to help work with the artist to build the story out. That also involves being involved at different levels of production. So like storyboards, maybe I'll hire a background person, coloring team, I'm also involved in hiring colorists. So I'm pretty much involved across the entire production. The the main thing that I'm not doing, drawing the actual drawing. So I'll bring all the people together that are meant to be the talent that makes the magic happen, but I'm not actually physically drawing the magic, if that makes sense. I'm creating the idea, I'm writing the script, I am art directing at every stage of production, I'm selling the project and marketing the project, and that's my workflow for one project. Now imagine I have 10 of those. That's why I have an assistant now to help me (laughs) keep on track. And then I also make these YouTube videos to help market my project, inspire others, bring out some education to the world, but also market my stuff, check out my project, Projects, link in bio, yeah. Is it no- normal to think about the story name before the story itself? I actually forgot who said this, but a famous author once said, you can come up with ideas just from the story name. Some people start off with a name and it inspires an idea because the name is usually attached to the original concept of the project, right? So it could be like, <laughs> if it's like an isekai title, then you're pretty much just putting the log line in the title, right? There's some titles that can inspire an idea. And then from that idea, you then take that and you build it out. So of course that is not abnormal. I would say it's not also normal either. I think it's like just a thing that people do. Different creatives come up with different ways to develop stories. Coming up with the title first is not a bad way. Are your comics actually getting animated? Yes, but I can't talk about it. Not allowed to talk about anything. (laughs) <laughs> Unfortunately, I wish I could say more. Can I have a similar art style like my idol, Tite Kubo? Tite Kubo, if you don't know, is the mangaka behind Bleach, which is a popular anime, popular manga, franchise. Can I have a similar art style? Of course. Everyone's inspired by something. The art style for Double Kill, you know, Umer Ali. I would say that he's pretty inspired by Tite Kubo. We loved Tite Kubo growing up, the two of us. were like teens fanboying over Tite Kubo's art style. And I've noticed that his art style is somewhat inspired by Tite Kubo 
Igbo's work. So I would say, hey, always find to have a similar art style to someone. What you want to do to stand out is obviously start to develop your own style so that you can stand out from just being like, you know, in Tite Kubo's shadow. If this was your last day on earth, how would you spend it? Fun question. Probably with friends and family. You know, I think a big part of what I do every day is I do the things I want every day. I write, I drink coffee, sometimes I travel, I hang out with my friends in the evenings. My life's pretty solid. And uh, I would hate to spend my last day on this earth working. Even though I love writing, I do it every day. I would love to spend it with friends and family because I care a lot about them. Croissant or spaghetti? What are these questions? Spaghetti, I am a big noodle guy. What nonfiction books do you recommend for research? Like for managing business art. I read this book on developing studios and leadership called Creativity Inc. That book is a nonfiction book detailing the inception and building of Pixar, the animation studio. It's acquisition, what one of the founders learned throughout the process of developing and building Pixar, which if you didn't know, they built a whole new technology that really revolutionized animation. They were involved with Steve Jobs. There's like some Disney stuff, acquisitions, all that stuff. That studio went through a ton of stuff where they had to build a lot of, some of the biggest IP that are coming out of Disney were, were built by, you know, Pixar. So that book is really interesting because you learn about developing a studio, but also like there's lessons that are, that are taught from that journey that are very business oriented. Manga and theory practice, I'll put a link, I have a link in my description for that, which is basically the creator of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure created a Bible for how to create manga and work in the manga industry. That's pretty solid. And then yeah, the classic atomic habits probably. Like I, I think the hardest thing about what you do is like having to work in the art or writing industry, which means drawing or writing or doing things that you would normally find a hobby, even when you don't want to do it, which means that for example, me, like I'll work like 80 to 100 hours a week, honestly. I'll be honest, I don't always want to write. I don't always want to work. I don't always want to show up. I sometimes want to just sit back and watch anime and you know chill but i can't that's life that's serialization that's projects whatever right and so having discipline having habits that can like define your life and being able to help you show up every single day is very useful i would say what do you do when you're at discover that your idea already exists do you dump it i would say everything probably exists in some shape or form it's like how can you take the idea and be transformative with it right a good, a good example would be my series just a goblin i would say that the idea of a goblin has already already been done. I didn't know that this existed already, but I think it's like Remonster or something is a series from the perspective as a system fantasy, power fantasy series from the perspective of a goblin. So actually it's my series, which is about a goblin that is also discovering a system fantasy is not that original. And I didn't even know the other one existed. So it's already existed. But the way that I did the story is a little bit different because it's more, it's closer to like a Naruto type story where, or one piece where you have a character on an adventure to try and solve a very difficult difficult problem, which ultimately in this series is, is world peace, right? Solve racism. That's what Just the Goblin's about. Solve racism. The Remonster series is about this guy just like leveling. It's like soul leveling sort of, right? Or reincarnated as a slime. And so I think doing a twist on what already exists is always a great way to try and make something feel fresh. Cause people sometimes will be in my comments and they'll be like, this, it's a goblin, like Remonster or whatever, which fine, but it's completely different. They never are like, wow, this is the same as the ma main character of Remonster. No, the concept is just like, hey, there's a goblin involved and there's a system. That's it. That's literally the only similarity. So if your idea exists, how can you twist it to make it feel fresh and feel different? Can Webtoon income pay the bills? And is pacing different between Webtoon and manga? Webtoon income can pay the bills. There's people making millions of dollars on Webtoon, which is crazy. Not everyone is making that money, of course, but you can definitely make six figures. You can definitely make a normal living just by doing Webtoons, for sure, positive. Story business is crazy. There's a lot of money to be made, but uh, obviously it has to be good. Uh, it's a very competitive market. People can only read a few stories. A lot of series fail, some series make it, but webtoons can definitely pay the bills. The pacing between webtoons and manga, I would say, webtoons probably pace to double the speed of manga. So one chapter of webtoon, around 60 panels, one chapter of manga, uh, somewhere between double that. Yeah, manga is just happens to be more panels per chapter, and therefore it is paced at a slower pacing than when compared to webtoon. And webtoons, supercharged, they're super fast. Why did you choose Webtoon as a publishing medium instead of manga? I'll be honest, manga industry is not that 
global from a creator standpoint yet. That means, you know, if you want to publish in Japan in a competitive nature, most of the people getting those gigs are of course Japanese. Makes sense. In the webtoon industry, there's a lot of Korean stuff, there's a lot of Japanese stuff, but there's also a lot of like people from France or the US or Mexico or all over the world, right? And so there's a lot more chances from a global perspective from of someone who's outside of Asia to make a splash in the webtoon space at the moment. And for me, it's not like I'm telling different kinds of stories between the what I would have told in the manga industry and the webtoon industry. I know that there's some tropes that do better in webtoon and there's some tropes that do better in manga, but honestly, I'm very fortunate where I'm able to tell the stories that I want to tell without adhering too much to the standards of the medium. You know, I'm not opposed to doing manga. I really want to do manga one day. It's just like the budgets are smaller from what I've seen so far. The opportunities are less and it's just very, very competitive from the nature of, hey, I'm an American that would have to either move to Japan to try and publish manga or they want more artists because they have Japanese writers that can do the story. And most of the stories are from Japanese nature. There are very rarely stories that are coming out of the manga space that are more international. And that's just how it is. I think it'll change because especially with the new uh, manga industry that's starting to grow in the global stage. What's the hardest webtoon you're making? Angel Wings. I have to write each script like four to five times. It's just a hard series. From a narrative perspective, it's very hard. From an art perspective, I'm working with Komipa, who is one of the most experienced artists I've ever worked with. We have like 10 artists or something working on that series. It's just a hard series. It's very narratively different and intensive from anything you'll ever read on Webtoon. It is very artistically intensive. Again, I think it is different from anything that you'll see or read on Webtoon as well. That series is just a hard one, but I'm very excited for it. And it comes out end of October. I think it's October 20th, I want to say, If, but I think it's the 20th. But yeah, please stay tuned. It's going to be on Webtoon Original. Anyway, last question. That was the last question. Thanks so much for watching the video. You guys really appreciate it. Make sure to drop a like, drop a comment for asking any sort of questions that you guys have for next week's video. Also, if you got this far, let's comment a special word for today, which is silver. <laughs> let's do silver. Once again, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe. Peace.